My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And uh, <laughs> there's times where people say things and you just can clearly see they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Right, so we're talking about uh, cock to brock and be stupid fast. And uh, I wanted, there was a lot of chit chatter and a few things that were said in the comments. And this is great. When I bring up a, a, a topic or show you someone else's video, stuff like that, it's great because it, when people comment, it shows the gaps or the lack of understanding or so on um, with some of these physical attributes and stuff. So what we're talking about is we're talking about brake pads and uh, chamfering them. So let's just say we have two brake pads like that. Let's just do that, a dotted line. So basically, by chamfering it, you're removing half of your brake material. Any road, so I was scanning through my comments and I found a comment. Uh, no, it wasn't my comments. It was um, for the video I did about Brock the Cock and it was on his comments. And um, he was arguing the toss as usual that this is not a bad idea. And he says, uh, someone says, why don't you just delete the caliper? And he says, uh, yes, we could have. It is covered at 9 minutes 40. But your half of two parts equals one statement this assumes that you're using 100% of the available braking power. In reality, these bikes will stop quickly from 150 mile an hour plus using very slight pressure on the lever. Well, it depends how quick you want to stop, doesn't it? After these mods, the same braking can be accomplished with slightly more apply, a pressure applied to the lever. Wrong way around, dickhead, right? <laughs> this is what I mean by lack of understanding. Yeah, Dom needs a pipe. complete lack of understanding so some people started going on about um, coefficient of friction and stuff like that and I do love this so a lot of people are told that friction has nothing to do with surface area that is not true at all think about it right if you had a block on a table that is just say this big and you push it and then you've got a massive block that's pushing it now it's all the relation with mass and stuff there's going to be more friction, right? Or let's just say you have an equal mass like this, and then you have this like that, but you stack more mass on top of it like that, right? This is going to be harder to shift. What you are told is that the coefficient of friction has is, is independent of surface area. That doesn't mean that surface area doesn't matter. That's the coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction is not friction, right? The coefficient of friction is um, like saying if you had like a, 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 a drink or a liquid, right? Um, you could say the amount of sugar in one and the other um, as a percentage or something like as a factor is... Uh, it doesn't matter how much of the stuff you have. Well, obviously it does. If you have a massive vat and 50% of this stuff is sugar and you have a small amount of 50% is sugar, the, the, the actual physical amounts are different, but the percentages are the same. Coefficient of friction isn't a percentage. Coefficient of friction is a bit of a funny thing. Friction is one of those things that we do not fully understand. We, there's a big dis debate, if you get what I mean, in physics about exactly how friction works. Is it electrostatic attraction? Is it the Van, uh, van der Holt? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it electrostatic attraction? Is it mechanical locking? Is it all of these things? And in some experiments, it looks like it's this, and in some experiments, it looks like this. So it's a combination of the two, depending on what's going on. So, for example, you can polish something so it has lower friction but then you can polish it so much that you can ring things together and they stay together. Van der Waals force, that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> you know what I mean? Electrostatic attraction, stuff like that. So 
you can have two very, very rough surfaces and they've got high friction. You polish them, polish them, polish them. Their friction tends to, their static friction tends to drop. And then all of a sudden you get to the point where you can actually polish things so much that they'll literally ring together and then you're fucked. So friction and then there's air gaps and all this kind of stuff. So basically boundary layer effects. There's all of these things going on. And we still aren't entirely sure. It is one of those fields of physics that is still a hot topic. Any road, getting back to it, the coefficient of friction. So when you look at friction, you look at the friction force. Now what you've got to do is you've got to understand that that's just a force, right? That's all it is. So you're trying to work out the force. And this is basically the coefficient of friction. So the coefficient of friction and the normal force, which in most examples is um, gravity for a lot of things like when you're trying to roll a tire or push a block across the surface of the earth stuff like that and the normal force is a force that's mass times acceleration i should never put fucking times because people get all funny about it just put a dot right there we go right so it's the force and this factor and the coefficient of friction for t we have to start somewhere it's a bit like Celsius where we said, right, we want to measure temperature. Let's just do zero of water freezing and um, water boiling is 100. And there's our graduations. We want to put 100 you know, deviations in between there. Um, and then we just said, that's it. Even the Kelvin scale is based on the Celsius scale. The increments are the same. It's just that we've defined zero Kelvin right down at absolute zero, blah, 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 blah. Um, so the coefficient of friction is when we don't, because we don't have any units for friction, we don't have any um, meters per pascal, newton, blah, blah, blah. We don't have all of this. Well, meters per newton, pascal would be weird because pascals are newtons over a surface area. Regardless, <sighs> basically, the coefficient of friction, we just said a tyre on tarmac, that's one, right? Anything slippier than that is lower than one. Anything stickier than that is higher than one and then there you go so we had to arbitrarily start with just that figure and the problem with that figure is is that it doesn't you can get nothing from it it's just a factor you know what i mean so basically whatever your force is if it's tire on tarmac what tire what tarmac you know the small grain tarmac large grain tarmac there's a fucking stupid number of varying compounds temperatures involved blah, blah, all these things so when you get to the coefficient of friction, it's basically just a multiplier, it's a factor. So if it's one, whatever your force is, it's one, right? So if you have the same force, so you have the same mass, let's just call this mass. Let's just say this normal force is something, say, like 100 kilos, right? It's 100 kilos, right? That's what we've got on there. If we had a factor of one, so tire on tarmac would just say, oh, well, that's one times 100, that's 100. If it's then on just, say, something slippier that's 0 0.5, then this would be 200. Uh, not 200, fucking hell, fire 50. <laughs> you, you would require less force to push it across that surface, and so on. The reason why this equation isn't really meant, it's, it's to give you an approximate figure. The problem is, is when you get to stuff like ringing. When you ring two things together and you try and push them apart, you go, fucking hell, what's going on? Because steel on steel the coefficient of friction is 0 0.78 or something like that. I'll put it on the screen. But regardless, steel on steel, when you go to push it, it slides, it slides, it slides. But when you ring it, it's like, oh my God. And the materials, the coefficient of friction hasn't changed. The mass of the block on top hasn't changed. So all of a sudden, and this is why coefficient of frictions or this friction equation is just a guesstimation. It's to give you the very basic it's about there, but this is why our understanding of friction is a tiny bit broken because that equation doesn't tell you all of it. It's not as simple as that. Coefficient of frictions are also based on temperature because obviously energy and stuff like that. We'll talk about friction in a different video. Let's get back to this brake pad malarkey. So if you want to know, um, the problem is here is that people think that the coefficient of friction has got nothing to do with surface area. If that was true, why have we got bigger tyres on the back to get traction? 
why when you go dragster racing do they have massive tires to try and get as much traction as they can if surface area had nothing to do with it we could all run skinny tires and we'd all be fucking fine it'd be good for you know mass reduction but it's not and this is because the coefficient of friction is basically just telling you the force in and around about way when we start looking at surface areas we're looking at shear and we'll get to that in a second but um, to basically prove this out just say if you had two ice skates right you had two ice skates here and let's just say each ice skate blade you know what i mean has i don't know i looked at my foot because <laughs> you couldn't see it they have a surface area of five centimeters squared so if you say right just say we have a mass the mass of you was 100 kilos right 100 kg so we'd have 100 kg right forgetting the coefficient of friction stuff like that we don't really need that 100 kgs and we need to work out the force here so we don't know what the force is so it's 100 kgs times 9.81 meters per second squared per second squared because that's our acceleration force is mass times acceleration so there's our mass up oh, okay now fire what's going on there here's our acceleration jobs are good and and there's the times in the middle so that's 981 newtons all good so this is 981 newtons that's how much force it is we've taken out the acceleration part of it but we've also got a basically um no we'll leave that up there now we've got our force we can now work the pressure at the blades because that's important so we've got these two together that's 10 centimeters squared so basically we get our 981 newtons and we divide that over we spread that over so that's 981 newtons let's just call it 980 let's get rid of the one 980 newtons divided by 10 is 98 newtons per centimeter squared because we've got newtons here centimeter squareds here and this is pressure fucking wonderful and this works out to be about 980 um kilopascals right that's the pressure oh fucking hell what would that be it's about seven thousand in it uh 980 divided by uh, uh. so it's about 140 psi right so or or 140 psi that's the pressure there now all of a sudden what we do is let's just say we delete this one and we get rid of that one yeah so now we're standing on one leg so our mass hasn't changed but we've reduced our surface area by half well if you do all this again this number is going to be the same because it's our mass times the gravitational acceleration of earth's gravitational field so let's just fucking do that like that but now it's divided by five like that so basically you're just doubling it up and let's just say instead of 198 90 what's that eight that's four so 194 newtons per square centimeter which means our pressure basically just doubles we're looking at 280 obviously you've just gone from one foot to the other uh, both feet to one so the pressure doubles so you half the surface area here and the pressure doubles the force uh, divided by the surface area right so that's what's important so what did silly bastard brock say silly bastard brock says if you want to apply half of the braking force uh, you you know if you want to break even more you just squeeze a bit harder fucking god no so let's just say that this brake pad is uh 10 centimeters square let's just keep it nice and simple right so that means that this one because he's shaved half of it off is five uh, five centimeters squared so let's just say we apply a thousand newtons of force so you pull in the way you do now let's just ignore feedback for a second but he said if you want to break harder you just pull a bit harder right so we've got a thousand newtons of force we've got a surface area of 10 right there like that or we've got 500 uh, 500 idiot a thousand newtons of force the same amount of pulling force divided by five centimeters squared 
Well, this will equal uh, 100 newtons per centimetre squared, and this one will obviously equal 200. 200 newtons per centimetre squared. So basically, these are just pressures, right? And uh, you can convert them into megapascals, stuff like that, kilopascals, what have you. So basically what it means is, is if you pull the same, exactly the same, right, you pull the lever to the same degree, the same angle. All the rest of the brake system is the same, but you've reduced that pad area. So basically what happens is, is you've actually got higher pressure across that brake pad. The worst thing is, is when we look at shear. So if you have your backer like this and you have your pad material, right, the shear, uh, which is tau, is the force over the surface area. So this is why this matters. So basically you're applying a force over this surface area because the disc is wanting to move like this and the pad is stationary. And basically these are the, the same kind of pressures and stuff like that. So the brake disc, this is just talking about shear. So this is just basically, eh, you know, trying to grab the pad and pull it. We haven't even thought about thermal load and stuff like that. So the thermal load is basically all the friction created during this contact of these two things pushing together. This entire pad surface is how it conducts that heat to the pad. You want to conduct the heat to the pad and not the disc because the disc starts to go wobbly. It's not the fact that the, the, the disc and the pad will heat up evenly while they're in contact and as it spins around, hopefully it starts to cool stuff like that but the fact of the matter is is this contact area here is how you um, conduct the heat through you know the thermal load well you've got half of that here so basically this contact patch is going to heat up like a motherfucker if you pulled it to the same you'd heat up like a dickhead um, not only that is it's under all this shear you know because you are going fast and you want to slow down so you pull the pad the pad starts to shear it all starts to crumb off and break away. Someone sent me a picture which is related to something else, but it looks like this, basically. Your pad starts to tear itself apart because this shear, in a sense, if you think about it as molecules like this, it's the bonds between them and the strength of those bonds. So as soon as you start to pull these atoms this way, they all just fucking start to let go. The force is too great, right? Uh, because of the, the speed of the disc and this force being applied to the pads. And then you've got this heat saturation issue, because basically it's like a funnel. What he's done is he's turned his pads into this, right? Where this surface area was basically designed and tested to manage that, basically that thermal load. And instead he's cut it down to this, right? So it's like funneling heat, like just think of it heat like water. It's like funneling water or heat through a smaller cross-section, this one here, right? So what's gonna happen? Not only that is you're rubbing on your, your disc around the periphery, which is worse. <laughs> it's worse because the, the velocities of the disc are higher and higher as you go out. Not the RPM. <laughs> but anyway, um, so basically the outer periphery of the disc is going faster, has a higher velocity than the inner side of the disc. And that matters here, you know, your velocity here, that really matters. So number one is if you were going to chamfer pads, if there was some reason to do it, you'd do it the reverse of what he did. You'd basically take the top section off and have the bottom section. There's the thermal load issue. You know, you're gonna start heating up the disc around the outside. People talk about warpage and stuff. Yes, if you proper slam on, you're basically gonna get them discs so hot because you are basically concentrating this heat in one region. Um, that you're going to cook your discs, you know what I mean? They are going to get hot and they're going to get warm. They're probably going to stretch out a bit. You're going to wear... The, the other thing is as well is this pressure thing that I was talking about. So you bang on the same you do. There is obviously feedback there. But when something goes horribly wrong and on a drag strip, you know, if you were doing 30 mile an hour, this wouldn't matter. The brakes are well designed beyond those, you know, the, the over-engineered for 30 miles an hour. When you're going as on a track strip, which is all about going as fast as you can, as quick as you can, 
when it all starts to turn to shit and it happens in drag racing a lot someone comes across you or whatever you want to apply the brakes you apply the brakes and fucking nothing happens right because you jam on the brakes as hard as you can those pads whack the disc they start to shear which means they start to crumble away and all turn to shite and this is about heat fading we'll talk about heat fading stuff and thermal expansion and how that makes things worse and so on but basically you are going you're in a spot where you are trying to go as fast as you can and trying to break you know in in the ideal world you've got fucking half a mile of runoff but this is these are brake systems they save your life so even when he says well this is for drag racing why does that matter you are trying to go as fast as you can a lot of these bikes especially bikes in the class that he's doing do about 140 130 140 by the time they get to the end of the strip fucking deer runs out whatever happens fucking i don't know the moon starts to come towards the earth whatever fucking lesbians take over the world it doesn't matter you need to slam on and you slam on it can't take the thermal load this pad can't take the thermal load the sheer forces are ridiculous and what was his answer oh if you're not slowing down fast enough just squeeze a bit harder dude you've already fucked your pads by then they're already and then you're just going to load them up even more and the whole thing is is if you want more braking force just squeeze harder no you're already if you squeeze with the same amount of pressure at the lever you are already overloading the discs and the pads fucking moron this is what i mean you see they say these things what it means is if you do squeeze harder yes you are going well <laughs> are you going to get more breaking because like i said the pad and all the disc and all this are starting to fail they are heat fading like a motherfucker i'll quickly describe heat fading basically what happens is and usually it happens on track because you go round and round and round and round you slam on the brakes they heat up and then you get back you get off the brakes and you carry on this allows because the airflow and stuff this allows the brakes to cool down and then you slam back on again and they heat back up and then they get to eventually dissipate that heat now what happens with certain pads is is because the pads are not robust enough basically um under higher temperatures they, are, they don't retain their togetherness their rigidity their strength if you want to put it that way basically what happens is after a while is you're on the brakes the temperature falls but then you're back on the brakes and, the, and then basically they slowly become heat saturated and the worst thing is is when you slam pads on as they heat up they thermally expand which increases the pressure squeezing on the disc so it's kind of like a a um it's a feedback loop there's a big problem there because you're basically whacking on the discs they're heating up which means they expand which you're holding on the pressure and they're pushing on even harder and harder and harder the hotter they get and it's a runaway effect as soon as they start to heat up even more there's more friction they heat up even more more friction and then they start to fade your brake pads basically can't take the thermal environment that they're in and this is why they start to fade and turn to shit this is one of the reasons why i went from organic material pads or you can still buy them but organic material pads and go to sintered metal because the sin the sintered metal are better thermal conductors it is that simple they can conduct the heat to the backer and the caliper and the pistons and your brake fluid eventually but they can basically conduct that heat quicker it also means that when they've been blasted by air they can conduct the heat better to the you know to the air around them so having a pad that has better thermal conductivity and hence why they use copper and one of the reasons why they're trying to get rid of copper because of all the pandas and stuff one of the reasons why they wanted to use copper is because it has excellent thermal properties um so yeah you know that's the whole point of uh, that's a, a basic explanation of basically brake fade and stuff is that the, if you are suffering from brake fade your brake pads just simply cannot take the heat that you are trying to push through them um when you get to ceramic compounds and stuff it's a bit different you'll notice in MotoGP they have these covers around that's because they are losing too much heat and they're trying to keep the brakes in an operational um an operational range uh, operating envelope basically an operational envelope um but yeah this is just complete fucking rubbish do not shave your brake pads off stuff like that We'll talk a bit more about friction because it is one of the funky things that we really don't have the exact num answers for just yet. You know, we'll get there. But there's so many things that are involved with it, it's really quite complicated. Any road, hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit. Oh, hey. Well, I'm cooking me up some stupid.